Hi there, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about AWS Code Star. So, what's basically this AWS Code Star is? So basically, it helps. It is for the development developers. They can easily deploy the things, you know, instead of taking the headache of like what resources are being required and which IDE they want to use it. So everything is there in one place. So it helps you to quickly develop, build, and deploy the applications on the AWS. And it is having a unified user interface. It helps you to easily manage your software development activities in one place. In a team also, you can work and you can dedicate the task and all whatever you want. And uh, we can have the setup for, whole setup for the CI CD that in the previous video I have shown you like how we were doing the code build, then, uh, then we were doing the code deployment also, uh, setting up the whole pipeline so all those things can be done in this one place so it also enables you like to work as a team to work together and securely as well as it helps you to manage the access and the owners who will be the contributors who will be the viewers to the project and all so rather than giving a full access to other team members we can restrict them by defining their roles over here so this is the whole uh, scenario so this is uh, we can have IDE also that helps the developers to connect with the code star. We so basically these it is free of cost, uh, but we need to pay for the resources that will be utilized in order uh, requirement as per the requirement for deploying your application like EC2 instance or any database or anything. So those are chargeable. So it will create a cloud formation stack and there will be a code commit. There will be code build and deploy. So those three major parts of the pipeline. So, and the cloud formation template will be stored in the bucket. We can also uh, trigger a Lambda function. We can have a, so basically from the code deploy, we can have a API endpoint also. So these all are connected together. So this is the whole concept for code stuff. Now, what are the benefits? It helps to start developing uh, on AWS within a minutes and manage the software delivery at one place. And we can also uh, work across the team securely. And we can choose the different templates in order to start, you know, rather than developing the things from the scratch, we can just choose the templates. There are lots of templates are there. Most of the languages that are being supported, like C Sharp, Go, Java, HTML, and all. So don't need to worry about the uh, templates availability so lots of things are there that we can check in the interface so let's move on to the aws console so just type it over here code start so those who will be running this one for the first time so uh, it will show you some under the projects you need to define some role. So one small pop-up will be there on the top. So make it sure as I'm doing, I think I'm doing, uh, I think fifth or sixth time. So I, I cannot show that message a pop-up message. So those who are, will be doing for the first time, they will get a pop-up message on the top that you need to define the service role. So let's create the project. So you can see the, uh, these are the templates. So you can just filter this templates. So you can see we have the options over here. Let's say web application, web service, whatever you want, you can choose. So once you choose web application, these are the technologies that we can have. Now click next. Oops, I think I didn't choose it. I need to click on the other one over here. I will just show you with the ASP.NET core. So I'm choosing this one. So you can see the Django is also there. Ruby on Rails is there. So a hell amount of things are there. And it is showing you what are the resources that will be used. Runs on virtual servers that you manage that is aws ec2 instance it will give you the details even you can check in the cloud formation stack what are the resources are being spinned up so you can just 
have a control on that. So project name, let's say code star project. And that's the ID of the project. So we can also maintain our repository either using the AWS code commit that I have shown you in the last video. Even you can use the GitHub. So you need to provide the credentials and the GitHub repository in order to bring it over here. So you can choose. So I'm just using a code commit. I'm not going for the Git. Otherwise, I need to provide the credentials. So you can see T2 micro instance is there, VPC. And we need to choose the subnet over here. And those who are not having the key pairs, they can create the key pairs. So you you need to get, go to the EC2 dashboard over there and you have to create the key, key pairs. So I'm using my existing key pair. Then next. So in order to access the EC2 instance later on, so you need the access key. So if you're not having downloaded those access key, then it will be a problem. So it will be good for you to create first and then download the fresh keys. So that's it. So we'll create the project. It will take some time. So you can see over here, even you can set up your Cloud9 environment also. I will show you that one also. So let it um, first set up the whole project. Then we can, you can see this is disabled view application. We have view of our application. Even we can also have over here develop with other IDEs. We can set up means other IDs you can choose Visual Studio, Eclipse, whichever you want. You can have it over here the interface. So, but I will show you there's a Cloud9 how we can use it. It is just a simple Visual Studio code similar to that like that interface is there. So you can use that. Or else, if you want some dedicated one, Eclipse or Visual Studio, so you can use this. We can also track the issues. We can also add the team members if you want. I'll show you later this one, team members and all. So as the project is still provisioning, we can set up our AWS Cloud9. So again, this is a T2 micro. We need to name the environment. Let's say code star env. And you can see over here cost saving. If you are not using for more than 30 minutes, it will automatically shut down your environment. So let's create this environment also. So you can just, you can see this provisioning at the time. So we can see our cloud formation stack also over here. So you can see it has deployed web application. It is uh, it's in progress. Drift, we are not checking Drift. So if you remember what was Drift, it cloud formation stack. So it is not checked. It means what are the resources are being getting changed. So it's still working. You can see the repository over here. Let's, let's open that code commit. I will just open in different, different once then we can open over here code pipeline so in the code commit you can see code start project two minutes ago this has been created so this code commit and all these are not chargeable just you need to give for the resources like setting up a pipeline and all so you can see there is no pipelines yet but it will soon appear your pipelines and even you can see over here the deployments still not there applications still nothing uh, code start project is there on premises two minutes ago so you can see the details over here and even s3 bucket was being created you can see the template over the cloud formation template so this is how this code commit and you can see over here creation is in progress so you can see the resources over here you can see code start project working build deploy and all those things now once this one is done then cancel you can just refresh your page and you can go to the 
picture it is showing over here view on cloud formation stack and this view application is still disabled so just wait for it you can also click on the ide this one is also not created yet We'll just wait for the cloud night environment over here to get loaded. Okay, we can go back to the project. Okay, till the time it takes, we can just uh, we can just directly go to the cloud nine and oops cloud nine and we can keep it open in another tab so you can see this environment has been created so you can just click on this open id and you, it will just load your whole project over here so similar thing, you can do it for the Visual Studio Eclipse and on you can do it. So this is the terminal over here. You can work from the terminal also if you want. I'm just closing this welcome page. You can see code start project. And you can expand this. You can see the master repository, master branch it is. Okay, so you can see over here, this is our core application. That is the default template that we are having. It's taking some time to load. Okay, so you can see these are the views over here. And this is the home. And this is the index page. Okay, that is the example app. So once you make changes to this one, it will automatically go to the code commit. You will commit the code over there, and then automatically your build will be fired, then automatically your deployment will start. So all these things, the whole pipeline is connected. So you need not to go anywhere, and you can just use it uh, basic computer, you just internet connection and you can have the ID set up everything done in one place. So we can go to the code star. I will just refresh this page over here. Okay. Now you can see this button has been enabled over here. You can just click on this. So here we go. So our first ASP.co project has been done. Now if you see the pipeline over here, I'll just show you code pipeline. You can see over here the whole pipeline. Taking some time. So you can see this is your pipeline also getting created automatically. We do not to do anything. So this is one of the best thing for the developers who want things to be set up quickly you know rather than depending upon the infra team to set up the whole thing for them creating the template and all so everything is there in one go and in the s3 we can get the template if you want to spend those resources yourself like you want to make up your own 
pipeline and what resources using that YAML file, build specification file, you can define over that also. It's taking too much time to load. I'll just close this comment over here. I'll just close. I'll close this ID also. I hope you understood. Now, once I make changes, automatically that pipeline will be triggered. I just want to show you. It's taking too much time. I think there is some issue with the my internet or maybe AWS console. Let me check. Yeah, it's not loading the pipeline. It's taking time. There is something wrong with this. I think so. Okay, in the meantime, we can check over here the team. There is something wrong. Okay, team members over here, you can see I can add the team member. Okay, now finally it is done over here. You can see over here the source code commit, then build, then deploy, and that's it. So this is the whole thing being taken care by the code star. So we can click on this team over here. So this is what I was talking about. We can set up the, now as soon as in the cloud nine, I will make some changes and commit to my repository. So you will find that it automatically triggers the whole pipeline and it goes to the like, you know, the build environment and all those things. There is something wrong with the website, I think. I'll just close this six now. Okay, let it be there. This one is also taking time. Okay, finally the steam has opened. So if you click on the add, I hope it works. There is something wrong with the AWS console only because internet is working fine. It's taking time to load. So you can see over here, I can put the name of the person. I can just put the email ID and then you can see the roles, owner, contributor. And we are. so this will be helpful while who is doing going to commit and who is the owner 
like to him the pull request will be sent so all these things we can manage by using this project roles over here and they can use the login you know basically the email address and the display name so it will create a user so they can directly go to the console and get access to the aws code star so basically it is creating i am user over here so that particular user will be getting an email so you can see these are the users so if i'm selecting this i can put the email id and then what role he is going to play so we can or else we can create a new i am user also and whether he is allowed to do ssh or not so these things we can define under the team now i'll go back to my project So you can see over here in the cloud nine, uh, I'm not going to make any changes over here because it is taking time to load this IDE. So you can try yourself and you can check whether that particular pipeline is triggered or not. Of course, it will be triggered. And another important thing, once you're finished up with this lab, make it sure you go to the project and delete your project. So it will automatically delete everything, whatever the resources, whether the EC2 instance, uh, whatever it is being using. So it will delete the code commit and everything. So if you currently see over here, it is currently executing, uh, running one EC2 instance. Because of this ID, actually, I used E2 micro, so that's why you can see number of instances running. One will be for the environment, and one will be for our application. So finally, it has opened. So you can see over here, I will just make a small change over here. So you can see two EC2 instance are running. One is for the environment, one is for the cloud nine. Okay. This is all due to the T2 micro I have taken. Okay, anyways, so this is example app over here. So I will just change a little bit. Um, so congratulations, just cloud tech and i will just save this one okay some issues is there there is some connectivity issues are there Better you can try yourself this one using the cloud nine, or else if not possible, just comment on my video. So I will just show you try to make another video just for the cloud nine. So basically, it is getting disconnected. I'll just try to refresh, but again, if I refresh this one, it will take time to load. So you can see in the code star this is our project it is showing you the repository it is showing you the pipeline it is showing you the team also all the things are being shown over here just you need to do one thing once you finish this lab just click on this and delete the whole project so it will delete everything so i'll just delete this one so you can try this one yourself like how you are going to make change in the cloud nine and then the changes will be committed there is a master branch is there to which you are going to commit and then you can see the pipeline will get triggered. I hope I can show you. Okay, I'll just pause the video. If possible, I will try to show you. So 
I have made this change and have saved it. If mine is getting disconnected again and again. So you can see over here. We can also upload the local files. And also we can maintain this versioning and all. So I have just opened this code commit. You can see when was the last code that was being committed. You can just simply click save and you can see it's getting saved. So you can see, I still taking time. There is something wrong with today's web uh, console over here for AWS getting stuck okay I think there is some network issues are there so you can try yourself if not you can just uh, go to the code commit and you can make the changes to the whatever file you want and you can clone the repository also to your local system and then you can using the AWS SDK you can just commit from your local system to the repository and then you can use it basically the cloud nine is basically using one in situ since i think I, I i didn't notice that it was a t2 micro and it is getting you know the the number of cpus required to run it is getting exhausted so that's why it's not able to load and it is making the whole system hand with related to that repository as well as related to the build and all so i should have used t3 rather than using t2 micro so anyways, I hope you understood the whole concept. So we need not to do anything, just CodeStar will do everything for us and make it show in the end of the practical, you select your project and just click the delete button. So you can see it is clearly mentioned over here, it will delete all the resources and all, like EC2 instance, code commit repositories and whatever resources were there, it will just delete it and press the delete button. I hope you like my video. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.